qualifying is pretty much the only thing all F1 fans agree on. The session's length, the stages and the overall structure and placement in the weekend is loved by all. But nevertheless, it's the one thing that keeps getting rumors of constant change. With the debut of sprint races later in the year possibly changing qualifying once more, I thought I'd take a moment to tell you about the last time qualifying was changed, and the complete chaos that ensued after that. Today, we're going to be talking about what was it with 2016's elimination qualifying. For the longest time, F1 qualifying was done in two sessions, with some running on Friday and pole decided on Saturday, with special quality tires, unlimited tire use and fuel, no lap limit, quality engines, crank to the max and a ton more stuff. The best time of both sessions was the one that counted. In the late 80s and early 90s, due to the extreme popularity of the sport and the ease of entry, there were an insane amount of teams wanting to take part in every Grand Prix. But without an unlimited grid, the slowest cars would have to battle it out for the top 4 spots to make it through to regular qualifying. This is where we got the jewel that was pre-qualifying, where those extremely slow slash extremely unreliable teams had to manage a way to crawl their way around the track to maybe get to finish a lap fast enough to pre-qualify. That's where we get the amazing, if slightly sad stories of the Live team, Andrea Moda, Coloni, Modena team, the whole lot. For 1996, the system was changed though. To make it more showboaty, the format was slashed to just one hour on Saturday. This would mean that teams, catching on to rubber circuits, would wait until the last minute to set a time, which made the supposed spectacle as snorfest to fans and TV audiences just staring at an empty circuit for like 45 minutes, with the remaining 15 being a complete traffic jam. After a quite a few years of that, they changed qualifying once again for 2003 where all the drivers would do a single flying lap in championship order on Friday to gather data and tweak setups before the next day's qualifying session, where the same flying lap would take place, and the slowest driver from Sunday would go first and the fastest last. This gave an unfair advantage to those with the fastest cars to set a decent time on Friday and then enjoy a fully rubbered in circuit on Sunday by going last. For 2004, both sessions were held on the same day, with the running order in the first session now determined by the classification at the previous race and for the last 13 races of 2005, each driver would set a single flying lap on race fuel on Saturday afternoon while keeping the order being determined by finishing position in the previous race. After this, the three session formats was first introduced, and while a bit flawed on its debut, it would end up being the second longest lead format until now with three sessions lasting approximately 15 minutes each, where the slowest five cars get their position locked in and the remaining cars move ahead to the second and third session. But this was all a change for the 2016 Australian Grand Prix. On the 4th of March 2016, the FIA approved a new plan for qualifying, with the objective of making every second of the session full of action. After about 40% of the session was completed, the slowest driver would be eliminated, with drivers being eliminated every 90 seconds from then on until the end of the session. In theory, this is an exciting format, but when put into practice, it only led to a disaster. Host of cars eliminated in Australia while sitting in garages, Hamilton on pole with 5 minutes of Q3 remaining, Red Bull boss Horner apologizes to fans, Martin Brundle was also quoted as saying, I don't like it, it's not acceptable and it's got to change, it doesn't work and it has to go before Bahrain. When the session first got going, it all seemed fine, with the first 60 minutes of qualifying providing some excitement as the backmarkers were eliminated, while Daniel Kvyat's early, sexy, while Daniel Kvyat's early exit was a surprise. But as the session went on, the drivers found themselves sitting in the pits rather than looking to better their times, because of setups being changed or tires being warmed. There was just not enough time to do a time run, adjust the cars and then go back out. Some of the drivers were straight up confused by the fact that they were eliminated midway through improving their lap time. In the end, the two Ferraris and the two Mercedes were left on the timing sheets, and with 10 minutes to go, Hamilton set a fastest time, and happy with his performance, went to the garage. This time wasn't beat by any car, and in the last 5 minutes, instead of every driver battling for improvement in their final lap times, we saw the drivers taking off their helmets, getting out of their cars, and some even out of the pit boxes entirely. After this completely disastrous session, Toto Wolf was quoted as calling the system rubbish, but we got a transcript of the last time known to men where Christian Horner apologized, with said apology being directed at the fans. 
I don't understand why all the people are so surprised now. It was clear what was going to happen. There were plenty of engineers and other brains that basically had sort of predicted what would happen, said Sebastian Vettel. While 1996 world champion Damon Hill was quoted as saying, the crescendo was the guy getting out of the car. Hamilton could have waved his own checkered flag for pole with four minutes still to go, after seeing Hamilton improving his time while being the only car out on track. On Sunday, team representatives along with race director Charlie Whiting gathered to discuss the previous day's new qualifying format and agreed on dropping it for the next race in Bahrain, with the old format coming back and staying out from that day on. If this teaches us something, it's that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm sure Domenicali along with the FIA and the teams are working on the best way to improve qualifying, and it's clear that sprint races will only be tested this year, but all I have to say is tread carefully. So yeah, this has been it for this week's video. If you wish to support me directly, here's the link to my Patreon in the description and on the screen. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all next week.